I think we're away. Here we go. Yes, we're here. Um, Dan, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, and from YouTube channel viewers, we have Dan Butler here for the latest one to one. So, uh, Dan, yeah, thanks very much. Really uh, appreciate it. Thanks for asking me. And um, I've got some pretty good questions here for you. So, uh, if you don't mind, we kick off with the no, first one. No, so, so, so say these one to ones are designed to obviously to talk, re reflect about your time at our club, but then we want to talk to you about your career in Hull as well. So, the first thing, obviously, you came through the youth system at Peter, uh, Peterborough Portsmouth. Yeah. And then obviously, you got to start again at the first team. So, uh, why don't you think things worked out? They obviously you ended up getting released in you in 2015. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, I, I wasn't playing well enough. Mm -hmm. If the club wanted to get back to where they thought they should be, which was obviously Championship Premier League at that time, I probably wasn't playing well enough. If I'm completely honest with myself now, I didn't feel like that at the time. But, yeah. um, I mean, you were pretty young though, weren't you at the time? Yeah, I was young. I was very unfortunate that... Fortunate in some aspects, I got an opportunity, mm -hmm. but then very unfortunate, I was playing in a Portsmouth team that was probably the worst in the club's history. There was yeah. a lot of pre there was a lot of pressure, a lot of negativity, and I was young, and I, I, I just wasn't doing well enough at the time. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Was I a good player? Yes. Was I good enough at the time to help the club? get back to being a championship team, which obviously, unfortunately, they still haven't done. Mm. But they've got promoted out of League Two. They were very unlucky two years on the bounce not to get to the champ. At that time, was I the left-back they needed or should, ha should have had? No, because the person, obviously, they replaced me with is now playing in the Premier League with Sheffield United. Yeah. And the Stevens. And it's, mm. it's quality left-back, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, I felt very, yeah, I felt hard done by at the time. But looking back, I wasn't playing well enough, and I don't, I just maybe was a little bit too young um, to be able to deal with all the pressure and negativity around the club at the time. Yeah, I probably, I probably was. I was probably, if I was there now, or if I was in that position now, the person I am now I could deal with that easy. Yeah, but obviously, at the time, found it difficult. Was playing well one week, maybe a seven, eight out of ten one week. The next week I'll be a two or a three. Do you know what I mean? So my performances were quite up and down. And um, when you're playing in front of eighteen thousand fans at home every week, at that age it's tough, especially when it's not going well. When it's going well, it's the best feeling in the whole world. Mm -hmm. But when it's not, it's tough, especially with social media. Especially at that age, I was reading everything. Mm -hmm. And you without even realising, it's probably affected me way more than it should have been. Mm -hmm. But I started off playing in League One there, um, got my chance, fortunately, because the club was obviously going through a um, bit of a crisis with money and not having a very good team. So I got an opportunity and played quite well in League One, to be honest. Mm -hmm. but that, there was no pressure then. So you, you suffered an injury, didn't you? And then ended up going back out on loan yeah. after that. Did, that. did that halt you in any way? Um, not really. Uh, I just I uh, got quite a bad tear in my uh, medial ligament in my left knee. Mm. Um, I was playing well, but I come back eventually and started playing well again. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. I go out on loan to get some games, but I enjoyed that. To be fair, going out on loan it was a new experience for me. I went to mm. the older shop. I met some really good people. Played in a conference, which obviously I had to go to after I left Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave me a bit of a like a taste of what that level was like. Yeah, ended up working out quite well for me because obviously I'm for Torquay after I left Portsmouth. So yeah, um, going to be my next question actually. So you had a yeah. really with Torquay. Was was it worth stepping down to the non-league for that season then? Uh yeah, I loved it. I loved every minute of it to be honest. Um, obviously, like. Most stages of my career so far, very up and down. But mm -hmm. look, when I can look back, I'd say that was like a career-defining moment for me. Going there um, at Portsmouth, like huge club, everything mm -hmm. was done for me. 
I didn't even have to take my own boots to games. Do you know what I mean? Um, breakfast was there for me every day. Lunch was there for me at Portsmouth. Nice gym there. Fresh training kit. Nice hotels night before games. And then going to Torquay was the complete opposite. Yeah. Like a club that was, was struggling financially in the conference from a club that was financially ready to play in the championship. Do you know what I mean? Like two complete different scales of the spectrum, but um, I loved it. Obviously, first time I've lived away from home. Mm -hmm. I shared a house with 10 other lads, which I know sounds mad, but I did. There's like a seven bedroom house. There's two to us to like to a room, most right. room. Met some great people and just learned, you know, how to live by myself. I just had to grow up really more off the pitch than on the pitch. Mm. But I feel like that helped me grow up on the pitch, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And to grow up off of it. But it certainly helped, obviously, with it being in such a nice part of the world as well. Oh, talking. Obviously, I didn't know. I've only ever played there once before, and you spent like what three or four hours in that particular area, and then you leave straight away after the game, don't you? Mm -hmm. But what a place! I go down there. I've been down there every year since. Um, I was fortunate enough under my second manager at Torquay, um, Kevin Nicholson. I met a guy called Simon Jeffrey, mm -hmm. and um, he runs the main three gyms in the Torquay area. Okay, but um, he is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what to label him, but basically, I started training. He started training me, Phys like not football wise, but like physically, my like to work on my speed, strength, mobility, and my mental strength. Without realizing at the time, we didn't sit down and have sessions, but he basically helped me become strong in every aspect. And um, I still go down once a week now in every off season to see him and train with him. And, oh, brilliant! Um, Love it down there. Mm. Well, I mean, the missus go down painting pretty much every year for a holiday yeah, as well. Yeah, so, yeah oh, so, so we're the in that it. well. Yeah, oh, we love it. We absolutely love it there. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you know, that, that good season with Torquay then and all that hard work that you put in um, yeah. set you up for your next move, which was then to us. You, so you signed by Warren Feeney in 2016. Um, was there anything about Newport that stood out to you at the time when, when, when you were on the verge of signing? No, um, if I'm honest, no. Not at the time. Um, I was just... My mindset, when I left Portsmouth, right or wrong, looking back, it was wrong. But it kind of helped me at the start. was like, I need to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my main aim, although I didn't go straight to another League Two club, was to get back in the Football League. Yeah, absolutely. So I was like, I'll do a season at Torquay. Do as well as I can. Hopefully, I'll... Be able to get back into the football league so that was my main focus it, it didn't really matter to me where it was mm. um i was just fortunate enough that the first football league club that contacted me was Warren Feeney in newport mm. and i just straight away it didn't matter where it was i just wanted to sign i didn't know anyone at the club i'd spoke to Warren Feeney a couple of times on the phone and he's obviously sold the um newport dream to me and then mm -hmm. a week later i'd signed so, yeah. I, I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about the club, um, the area or anything like that. I was just desperate to be back in the Football League. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, so um, obviously then, for the start of that season, then it wasn't the best of starts all around. Nah. Um, do you feel Warren Feeney's sacking was harsh, though? Um, yeah, you know, I felt awful because mm. ultimately I gave the penalty away that ended up not getting him to sack just that game, but he was obviously sat the day after mm. the Grimsby loss and I give the penalty away in the 90th minute for us to lose. Do you know what I mean? So I felt terrible. Um, you never want any manager to You don't want anyone to lose their job. No, never. But, um, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, it was harsh. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, we weren't doing well though, but I wouldn't, oh, no. I wouldn't put the full blame onto him. For that, we had we had a lot of new players. It takes a long time when you get so many new players in for it to gel. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. If, I don't know if the club were taking the previous season's results. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, because the end of the season before we had a really bad run at the end. Yeah, and obviously, I'll be I'll be honest. I didn't know much about that until mm -hmm. after I'd signed. Yeah, I don't like to pay, that's like I don't like to pay attention to stuff like that. 
fair enough. Um, because like, I wanted to come to like the club. With... Yeah, mm. do you know what I mean? But um, it was made aware to me after he got mm. the sack that it wasn't going great the previous season. But yeah, look, it, when you sign so many players or you let a manager sign so many players, mm. you, you need to give them time to gel. I don't know how many games in the season it was, but it wasn't many. I think it was 10 because it was the same amount of games as uh, Terry Butcher the season before. Okay, yeah. So, that ended up working out right in the end. In the end. Or in the end. In the end. The see, we'll, end. Come, we'll come to that one because um, the first thing I, I have to ask, uh, what was Graham Wesley like to work for? Oh, you can see I'm smiling. Do you know what? At the time, it was my worst nightmare. Mm-hmm. But looking back now, it's, it completely changed me as a person. I think if you use it in the right way, it can, from, le- like from levels, it can take you mentally, you can be a completely different person in a good way. And physically, I, I was the fittest and probably strongest I've ever been pre- previous to him being there. But I hated it at the time, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, I, found, I found it really tough. But I don't know the particular day when it was, but something just switched in my head. And I was like, well, there's no getting away from this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, does it really matter what he says to me? No. Am I fit enough? Yes. Am I strong enough? Am I good enough? Yes. Well, just go out there and show it. And then the next time I got on the pitch after feeling like that was Stevenage away. I come on, come on in like the third minute, I think. Um, I ended up scoring. I know we lost, but I played really well. And from then on, I just felt like a completely different person and mm-hmm. player. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like he... Um, I feel like... It's happened quite a few times in my career, but I feel like people don't really understand me as a person or um, as a... Well, a player, obviously, but as a person. And I feel like I get a little bit... What's the word? I'm not judged. But misunderstood, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm quite aggressive, but not, and I don't mean to be aggressive. And like, I'm not an aggressive person where I'd like I'd grab someone, mm. or I start swearing. So I'm just really passionate, and I just really, really badly want to succeed. And sometimes I feel yeah. like that can come across as arrogance. But I'm really not arrogant. When you get to know me, I'm, mm-hmm. I never really like talking about myself. I just really, really want to succeed. I feel like it takes managers, especially, a little while to understand that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he eventually understood that. And that's why he ended up playing me and actually quite liking me. And we ended up getting on quite well. But previously to that, I found it tough. Yeah. And and I'll be honest, I didn't enjoy it. No, no. I mean, when I've spoken to to, to other ex-players who who played under him, um, you know, they they spoke about how... Hard that he made you work at training and that. I love that as side. Fan, as, as a fan watching, and um, the players did look tired a lot when yeah. they went on the pitch. So do you know what? It, I am um, that side of things. I loved. Mm-hmm. I love working hard. There's nothing I love more than working hard, and I really enjoyed that. It was more the the mental games that um mm-hmm. I found tough, like um. Maybe the constant negativity because if someone says something to you enough times you end up believing it yeah do you know what I mean if someone is constantly saying to you every day you're not good enough you're not good enough there will be a time when you actually do start to believe it mm-hmm. even though maybe for the first month or two you don't there will be a time where it clicks your head and you think well I must be if, he's, if he still thinks it now I must be do you know what I mean so that side I'd, I'd say I struggle with and then like I said a minute ago something clicks in my head I don't know exactly when it was or why it happened, but it just clicked. And then probably I just, something just left, left my brain and my body. And I just thought it doesn't matter anymore. I feel like maybe I got through that stage of being scared to fail. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or scared to make another mistake or scared to have another bad game. That just went. I wasn't bothered anymore. I was thinking to myself, it can't be any worse than it's been. Mm hmm. Oh, he might take me off again. Well, he's done it twice already, so. And then from then on, I felt like he obviously got the sack in the end. But that helped. Then when Flinney took over, 
start playing well. Do you know what I mean? Start showing everyone what I was really about. Absolutely. So I was, I was going to say, obviously, when Flynn took over, what exactly changed, obviously, for yourself and for the squad at the time? So imagine, like, we basically, under Wesley, I don't know, how, how long was he in charge for? It was quite a few months, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was, I don't think it was far off six months or six, yeah. seven months. So imagine we'd done all this physical training for that many months. Mm-hmm. So we all were, I'm sure most other people said, the fittest we've ever been, strongest we've ever been. Yeah. But we were getting to a game and we were knackered because we were doing it constantly. So basically, Finney was like, look, I'm not going to run you anymore because you don't, you don't need to physically run anymore. You don't need to do any more weights. You don't need to be tested mentally anymore. Just get back to enjoying football. Mm-hmm. So we'd spend all week playing football instead of running. Do you know what I mean? We were playing little yeah. games, crossing and finishing, keep ball, shooting, and it just become fun. Yeah. And you'd see, especially in the last however many games it was, we were getting to the end of the game, 70, 80 minutes, and we looked like we just started the game again. We were that fit. Because mm-hmm. we weren't going into games knackered, and we're all happy. And if you're happy, you play well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about your preparation. If you're happy and relaxed, 99.9% of the time you play well. Absolutely. You can, see that in, not... you can see that in the performances afterwards because it brings on to the next point I was going to make. Obviously, that it was the 12 games of the Great Escape that followed them when Flynn took over. Um, obviously, every game as it came along was really tense. Um, what was it like in the dressing room as you were slowly, slowly working your way up to catching Cheltenham and Hartlepool? What was it like to be part of that dressing room atmosphere? Unreal. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was yeah, it was amazing because we had such a good group of lads. You know, what I mean, we went through a lot together. Yeah, um, basically surviving the Wesley era, mm-hmm. going through all them hard training sessions together, all them hard gym sessions, all the defeats under him. Um, it just brings people closer together if you can get through that together. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we were all close. We were all like proper tight, all got on really well. And then the feeling you get when you can see something happening. Yeah. It just it just builds momentum. We and it we'd gone from being at the bottom of the league, which I know this is gonna sound weird, to feeling unbeatable. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you're bottom of the league, but you end up feeling like no one can beat you. Mm-hmm. Even after the Plymouth game, I think we lost six one. Was it seven? Six, seven. I, yeah, I, yeah. Like it sounds bad, but we just thought, all right, it's got. Don't get me wrong, we were gutted for about an hour or two after the game. Mm. By the time we were in training, luckily Flynn very good at it. It was gone. It, everyone, it was completely gone. No one was dwelling on it. If someone yeah. had a bad game, which a lot of us did, it was gone. All that mattered was the next game, and we were going into that like, yeah, we we can't be beaten. Um, okay. And it worked. It was weird. It was a weird feeling because obviously we were at the bottom of the league, but we just felt unbeatable, and we ended up getting ourselves out of that mess, thankfully. Yeah, because um, prior to that, the the previous thirty four games we'd only won five. Yeah, and we ended up winning seven in the last twelve. It just goes to show how much of a turnaround that was. Oh, yeah. I mean the the beginning of it was obviously the crew game, and you were with uh, a, a really nicely hit left peg yeah. um, winning at the bottom corner to get us back in the game before Labardi ended up winning it for us. Um, yeah. How was that goal for you? Uh, that, was, that was probably one of my favourite, yeah, I'd say probably second favourite goal of my career. Just purely down to the fact, like, I, I did, I'm not going to lie, I'm not saying I knew when I scored that we were going to stay up because I didn't. No. But, even the fans that day, I, I just felt like a sense of relief mm-hmm. from everyone. Even if we went on to draw that game, it would have been massive. The fact yeah. we went on to win was even bigger. The celebrations at the end of that game were like we had already stayed up. Yeah, I think I think we really believed that it was possible because um, I know the game before that was the Leighton Orient game, and, uh, and and I did say that it, I I said to Leanne and, uh, and and the people who I travel with that said, look, if Wesley's still our manager, I'm not going to crew. I'm just not travelling all the way up there to, to watch another Wesley performance. And um, when Flinney took over in the week, then 
I thought I gotta go. I absolutely have to be there. There's going to be something really different this time, and uh, I'm so glad that I went because um, I think I may I I actually went to all twelve except for the Morecambe away, which was in the week. That was the two. That was literally a couple of days after, wasn't it? Yeah, because that that was mad. Within two games, we were off the bottom of the league. You know, that was yeah. uh, unbelievable, and we really believed at that point then that it could happen. You know, I, I, I personally didn't oh, we, fear anything until we played. No, um, I, I remember the um journey home from the Morgan game so clearly like it was the first time as a group we actually spoke about staying up yeah on the coach because it was a long journey home it was late at night we were just mm-hmm. talking about it with just one two games on the bounce and that was like the first time you could really hear in people's voices like they believed that we had a chance of staying up yeah and the longer time went on it would just become like more and more positive the way we were talking the way we were acting even on a pitch we were like bottom or second bottom of the league but we were acting like we were at the top mm-hmm. and when you get momentum like that it's so important you need to keep hold of it and luckily we did absolutely so um then the conclusion then was obviously the Notts County game the Mark O'Brien mm-hmm. goal um what did that day mean to you personally then ah uh, that was I still talk about it with my family now. That was probably like the most important day or game of my career. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, you, I worked so hard to get back into the Football League. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like, and then I would have been back in the conference, which it's not a mug's league, but obviously that's not where I wanted to be. Yeah. And then to have a relegation on your CV, do you know what I mean? I don't know what would have happened to the club financially. I've heard that what might have happened. Yeah. I, mean, well, I think we, we all feared the worst, to be honest with you, if relegation had happened. You hear stuff, don't you? Obviously, you, thankfully it didn't happen, so we'll never know. But from what I heard, the club would have been in a lot of trouble. And when you when you get relegated, very, very hard to bounce straight back. Yeah. Especially if there are financial troubles. Do you know I mean, you probably would have had got a completely whole new team again. So, mm. frankly, we never found out about it. I think it would have been very tough on everyone associated with the club to come back from mm. that. Absolutely. So then, obviously, at the end of that, Fleddy rightfully got the job yeah. full time. And then the progression that followed over the next couple of years was uh, were pretty remarkable. So, um, what what do you believe was the recipe for the, the tournament? Because we'd had two seasons. Um, obviously fighting at the bottom and then for a while we were looking like we could have in, in that first season we were looking like we could have pushed up towards the playoffs it didn't happen in the end obviously it happened the season after but um, what do you believe was the recipe for success I mean I've always said that having a bit of stability and you know familiar familiar faces being yeah. around was a big would, would have been a big part of it because we had a bit of a cull for two seasons in a row yeah so what, what did you notice that was different the following season then um Obviously, having a manager and assistant manager that are like, I've played the game recently, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, especially the gaffer was, I played with him. Mm-hmm. Played, we played with each other under Wesley, do you know what I mean? So he literally went from being a player straight into management. So he understands the way certain players will feel. Understands mm-hmm. that all players are different. Everyone needs a different Everyone, some people need to train more than others. Some people really actually don't need to train too, too much. Mm-hmm. Depends what stage of their career they're at. Um, and just making sure, even if it isn't going well, that everyone is positive. I think that's the most important thing. And that's the best trait both of them had. Mm-hmm. Because, like, it's no hidden secret that the facilities at Newport, especially the training ground, aren't great. No. We actually didn't really have a training ground. I think there's a training ground there now, but we definitely didn't have one when I was there, a proper one. So you need to, when you haven't got the facilities, you need to make sure that everything else with regards to people being happy, when you do train, it's fun. Mm-hmm. And if you can get 20 people to work their bollocks off for each other, even though the circumstances aren't great, they'll do it. That's how you're successful. And that's what happened. Yeah. And it worked. Uh, and we could see that, you know, we, we absolutely could see that, you know, there, there was something so different, you know, about the team yeah. and about the county at that time. And we felt like we were going places. Um, obviously, a big part of that success was um, our runs in the FA Cup, of course. 
Yeah. Um, some unforgettable memories were made, you know, between those two seasons. Um, have you got a personal favourite? Uh, what, in the FA Cup? Mm-hmm. Between the um, two seasons. They're all so good. Obviously, mm. you have one and then the next one comes along and it feels even better, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The Leeds game was good. Mm. Um, really enjoyed that one, yeah. That was good. That was, do you know what I mean? We played on TV so much. That's another thing, like... Yeah. That's massive. Being on playing on TV as much as we did was unreal. Just like you know, it's a completely different feel when the TV cameras are there. Mm-hmm. Um, Middlesbrough away was good. Middlesbrough, they're all they're all good. Do you know what I mean? I'll be honest. Like I love playing against Man City and Tottenham at Wembley, but they're nowhere near as enjoyable as um, the wins. Oh yeah. I know you missed it on, on Leicester, didn't you? Yeah, I got to, so, but I didn't even know about the rule to be honest. But I remember. They got a man sent off against Wrexham, didn't they? And I ran over and they sent it back. I don't know if you grabbed me or if I grabbed him first. Mm. But we ended up holding each other. I ended up getting booked for that. So not even a tackle. It was just us mm. grabbing each other and putting our heads on each other. And Gaffer come in and change rooms after we won that game. I just scored as well, so I was buzzing. Yeah. Like, I've just been told you're banned. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, if you get a booking in round one and two, you miss round three. You didn't even know. I, I didn't even know before the game. I would have never run over there. No. And went anywhere near it if I knew. I wouldn't have even tackled. No. If I knew there was a chance of me getting obviously banned. Mm-hmm. But that's another thing, like horrible at the time being told I was banned. But you know, when you miss out on things like that, it makes you even hungrier to have better times, do you know what I mean? It made me even more determined to make sure that that's not my last FA Cup experience and thankfully it didn't turn out to be so. So, uh, obviously, when we played Man City, it was Bernardo Silva on your side, wasn't it? Yeah, him, he came over, and then Mahrez came over quite a lot. They mm-hmm. just kept moving around. I can Honestly, I remember at half-time, I literally felt like I'd played a full game at half-time. I've never been so tired in my whole life. Just, con- you know, it's hard, but especially in, like, League 2 and 1 games, there is moments of games where you don't completely switch off but you don't have to check your shoulder. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to constantly worry about... Because it just comes off instincts, like your line, how deep you are, how high you are, where yeah. certain people are, because you just know. But when they were moving so much, and it wasn't even like you could tell when they were going to move, they were just doing what they wanted, and they were so good at it, you literally couldn't even blink. And you couldn't like stop checking your shoulders and watching the line to make sure you weren't like making any of them on side. And at half time, I just felt, I felt knackered. Yeah. And they hadn't scored. But I literally felt like it was the end of the game. That was like a massive eye opener. Even against Tottenham, I didn't feel like that. Mm-hmm. They were just on another it's level. For an animal, aren't they? Yeah, they were, it was frightening. Cool. Yeah. But then... It was special, though. It was so... a special night. Is that sorry? It was a special night. I got to walk out my little yeah. game. That was, um, that was nice. I'll never forget that night. So um, it, was, it was always Rodney Parade, wasn't it? Uh, it, it is where it brought the, the yeah. best out of you guys. Um, so what was it about Rodney Parade, do you think? You know, why, why did those bigger clubs hate coming to Rodney Parade so much? <sighs> Obviously, the atmosphere for a home team is unreal. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Like, three and a half hours of fans felt like six and a half. Do you know what I mean? But I felt like the size of the pitch... And towards the end of my time there, the pitch was better. So I wouldn't always say the quality of the pitch, but it's definitely the size of the pitch. And you, you could say the quality. It wasn't horrendous, but it still wasn't a carpet. No. Made the way we wanted to play, even easier for us and even harder for the opposition. Because although we did play some decent football at times, if we had to go long and then play our decent football in the final third, we would. Because we had two strikers up there, and Podge and Jamma. Yeah. And even Frank, when Frank was with us. Yeah. Who would chase the ball if it didn't go near him and make something happen. Or if it did go near him, hold it up and bring others into play, either wingers or wing backs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we might play a bit of football and get across into the box. We, I feel like we did have an unfair name for ourselves with regards to being a long ball team. Yeah, yeah, a, a lot, of, a lot of managers oh. like to call this, you know, long ball and physical and all that. We, and, and I, we, it was we a, were physical, but we were good at it. 
Yeah. And no, no really other team bar probably Lincoln, I'd say, could match us physically. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did play some nice football. Not all the time, but I feel like it would have been stupid for us to try and constantly play football when we were good at roughing, te- like roughing teams up and making them feel uncomfortable because obviously that's where we got most of our success. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I suppose that's what it was about Roddy Parade. Then, obviously, you know, you guys you know, knew how to use the physical side of the game yeah. well. Obviously, you know, we were creating the intimidating atmosphere for them. You know, yeah. and Ronnie Parade wasn't the most glamorous of places to play your football either, was it? So, I speak to loads of people, even now, still about it now, and like, oh, they, they're always like, oh, I hate you playing at Ronnie Parade. Mm. And I was like, I loved it. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, when you've got. But well, when you've got Roddy Parade on your side, it, it's, yeah. it's a different thing when it's against you, yeah, of course. Yeah, also the two seasons under Flinney and Hertz. Mm-hmm. Love, I love playing with Roddy Parade. Lovely. There wasn't really many games where i come off. Bar the Oval game, where we got hammered and we didn't even get booed off. I don't know how. That just shows how good the fans were. We, got, we lost, was it 6 now. It was 6 0. I, I always put that down to one of the greatest footballing anomalies I think I've ever witnessed in my life. You know, we were so good before that and then so good after that. And Yeovil went down that season as well. I, know, I think that's why we weren't battered mm. by the fans after the game, which I still cannot believe to this day. I say to people now, like, what the fans are. And I was like, we lost 6 0 at home to Yeovil, who ended up getting relegated, and we didn't get booed off. Mm-hmm. Not properly, anyway. Do you know what I mean? No, you might get one or two. But the thing is, when you but, put, not many of us like doing the old booing thing. You know, we, we no, feel as though booing our own players off is not going to do anything positive. No, I feel like if that happened like quite frequently, then obviously they may have. But it was just like even things like that it means a lot to players, you know. Because mm. no matter how bad it does get, no one means for it to go bad. So little things like that. It, the players obviously do appreciate it. I couldn't believe it. I was just waiting for the whole stadium just to go boo. Yeah. And it, but, and it didn't happen. And then obviously the gaffer was quite good. He always made us go up into the bar after. Mm-hmm. I was going to, I remember walking up there, my family were up there. And I was thinking to myself, oh, this is going to be awful. Just lost 6 0. Going up into the bar, there's probably going to be quite a few fans there. Mm-hmm. And I had people come up to me like, don't worry about it. It happens, and it's just like things like that helps you obviously get over the game quicker. Mm-hmm. And yeah, mm-hmm. just obviously the players appreciate it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think I think I think we were shocked, obviously, by the score. Um, and but the thing is, it, it was just an anomaly. Um, the the only thing that that I found a bit bad about the day, really, other than the, the loss, of course, was the fact it was uh, three of the guys from the American Supporters Club had come over for it. <laughs> And uh, for two of them, it was their first ever time at Ronnie Parade. Oh, uh, God. You remember Gordon, don't you, the guy from California who yeah. came for the game? Well, he was there with two of his mates that he'd recruited into his uh, Newport oh, County oh. USA support group. Uh, but they did go to Tramia the week after, though, and uh, we obviously got the win up there for yeah. them. So well, that made it for it, fair play. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so obviously, you know, your, you know, your final season with us was a, a successful one. You know, we just, by the skin of our teeth, made it into the playoffs. And then, uh, you know, we went on penalties against Mansfield then. Um, obviously, the playoff final. I always said to everybody um, who I spoke to beforehand, that if we do end up losing this today, um, I'm not going to be overly disappointed because it's been a great season. You know, you know, wouldn't have expected to get this far anyway. But the way that the game went down was so hard to take. And I was going to ask you as a player, how hard was that to take losing in that fashion. Yeah, it was tough. Um, that, that was definitely the worst feeling I've had on a football pitch. It's just like, it's, I can't even describe the feeling I had. Obviously, to the point of exhaustion, like mentally and physically, like I think that was my 60th game that season. Right, yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? I had to, like, to get even get there, we, we all had to dig deep. Mm-hmm. We played a lot of games. We had a big FA Cup run. Yeah. I know we didn't go too far in the check trade, but we didn't get knocked out straight away. I think it was Cheltenham away, wasn't it, in the in the first knockout range? Yeah, we, got to um, we played loads, and obviously we didn't have a massive squad. No, no, of course not. Um, and like I said, with regards to facilities and that, we weren't being pampered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, we weren't training on carpets. We weren't having unbelievable recovery sessions because we didn't. We didn't have them silly, so you, a lot of the time you do have to dig deep. And then 
we got ourselves into a position where we had one more game to get into League One, and I honestly thought we were going to do it. And we played well that day. It was yeah, quite. Oh well, yeah. We didn't. We don't get me wrong. We weren't as good as we were in the second leg against Mansfield, but we um we played well. We were just unlucky. We had a couple of chances that obviously we didn't take. Maybe should have had a penalty. And then obviously Ogby got sent off, and they ended up scoring right at the death. Mm-hmm. But it was yeah. tough. Like. Um, it was yeah, it was sad. It was the most of the day. Like even going back into the change rooms with all the boys, mm. it was tough. But it was it was a good experience. I do look back on it with good memories. But at the time, it was tough to take. Oh, of course. But then you know, playing at Wembley is obviously going to be the pinnacle of uh, of a footballer's career. Of course, yeah. you know. And um, I I know we lost that game, but um, I, I think we felt so much immense pride in you guys, you know, for the effort that you did put in to get us there. I mean, it was another day at Wembley for us as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like you said, I feel like when it, obviously everyone can see how hard we did work. Mm. Not even just for the league, in the FA Cup, like I just said, I feel like when it doesn't go as well as it maybe should or could, you don't get as much stick because everyone knows how hard you did try. Absolutely. As, As a group, yeah, you know I mean, and we did. I don't think there was many games where fans could say, "Yeah, they didn't, they didn't want it today, or they didn't try today." Mm-hmm. Oh, of course, no. I don't think anyone could ever say that about you guys. Absolutely not. We so, um, we, we uh, worked. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, one thing I wanted to bring up uh, with you, uh, Dan, was um, obviously the fact that twice in a row you won the EFL Player in the Community Award. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you, you seem to have a real bond with our supporters. Uh, obviously, your involvement with the We Wear the Same Shirt group, um, yeah. you know, even to the point that um, you you know you, you were seen playing FIFA at, at, at a young fan's house with him. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I, I think, for me personally, that's a, that's a shining example of what a young footballer should be. Um, so, just wanted wondering if you could talk to us a bit about you know that side of your time at Newport, if that's okay. Yeah. Um... I don't know why it happened or how it happened, but I just I just felt like I just had an instant connection, especially after the Great Escape with the fans, something mm-hmm. that I hadn't had at previous clubs. And it wasn't like I even wanted it to happen. I wasn't consciously thinking, I want to have a really good relationship with the fans. It just seemed to happen. Mm-hmm. And then in my first season, Norman like asked me if I would like to come and watch the We Wear the Same Shirt group train. He said, go on, come along. You might like it. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll come along. Mm. I've never done anything like it before. And I instantly felt like um, a feeling I've never had before when I felt like I was actually giving something back Yeah. to people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it gives me a feeling like that I've never had. Obviously, I've had it a lot since, but that was the first time I kind of felt it. And I ended up building unbelievable relationships with every single person there. Um, Norman, all his staff, and then that just spread into literally every fan that I ended up meeting. Mm-hmm. I just, I just wanted, even if it wasn't anything to do with football, just making people feel happy and helping out. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I know quite a lot of the guys on the we wear the same shirt scheme, and um, like I say, I, I know how much your presence meant to them. Yeah. I thought it was cracking, you know, when I seen yeah, pictures I of you being here with them. I, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it. Honestly, I like just this, the feeling of giving back. I just loved it. And then I ended up building great relationships with literally every single one of them to the point where I was having Christmas cards put through my letterbox <laughs> from people. Do you know what I mean? And like I'd see them on a day off and I'd chat to them and do you know what I mean? Because Newport, you know what it's like. It's very, it's like a very small community, but that everyone's very together. Mm-hmm. And because I lived in the middle of Newport, I felt, I felt like part of, I felt part of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Same with my wife. Um, same with my little girl. Obviously, she spent the first, what was it, year and a half of her life there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we loved it, and we just felt part of it, and yeah, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Good man, good man. So um, the, the next part I'm going to bring on to then is obviously you moved to Peterborough. Obviously, yeah. no one in Newport begrudged you a move to a, a club like Peterborough, of course. Yeah. Um, 
obviously they're renowned for recruiting younger players and developing developing them well and seeing them eventually play in the championship and Premier League and that. Um, did did that kind of reputation within Peterborough factor in your decision to join them? Mm. Yeah, that also the manager wanted me. Yeah, I think was the was was the biggest factor because I feel like if a manager like Darren Ferguson does want you, kind of regardless of what club it's at, you're going to listen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and you're going to find it hard to say no. Mm-hmm. So. Obviously, I spoke to him, ended up signing quite quickly after the playoff final, and then obviously we're here now. But the, the first thing he said to me was, like, I really like you as a player. I feel he showed me clips of myself. So he was he, 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 yeah. he sat me down and showed everything he liked about me. And then he spoke about where he thinks I can get better and where he thinks I fit into him and like his systems. And I just sold it for me straight away. Definitely. Because and I know some people might not like it, but I'm massive on just trying to get better. Working mm-hmm. out and trying to get better every day. And he actually, everything he thought I could get better at, I agreed with. Mm-hmm. So I didn't take it like offensively, do you know what I mean? No, no, definitely not, no. So I put on the same page and it was like the first time I've ever met him properly, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So straight away from then it was like, yeah, this is where I've got to go. And um, it's ended up working out really well so far. Obviously, yeah, good. To be honest, um, I don't know why, but I found it quite difficult to start with. I'm not, I'm not sure why. I'm not really one to make excuses, to be honest. But it just wasn't quite similar to when it started at Newport for me. Very similar to that. Mm. Obviously, I've been through that before, so I kind of knew what I needed to do to say, to say get out of what was going on and that was literally just work hard yeah. and, and thankfully that happened so it's actually it's been a good year yeah yeah i, I know obviously the season concluded uh, prematurely yeah and i know obviously from speaking before we started the recording and from seeing Darren mccantony on twitter that um you guys had a real belief that you were going to finish in the top two yeah uh, this season so for, for it to be ended ended in the way it was without you even making it making it the playoffs you certainly must have felt i'd done by oh yeah Everyone did. It was it was obviously this whole pandemic has been strange for everyone. Yeah. We played Portsmouth on a Saturday the seventh, I think it was. Seventh of March. We won two 0 We prepared all week to play Bolton on the following Saturday. And on the Friday we got phone calls before we turned up at training saying it had been called off. Because of this, yeah. So you're thinking, what's going on? Obviously, I'll be honest, when there was little hearsay about coronavirus, mm. different countries, people would come in from runny nose, you'd be like, oh, you've got coronavirus, ha. Huh? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You, I, honestly, because nothing like this has ever happened before, no one took it seriously. No. The next thing I know, I haven't seen any of my teammates now for four months. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In that time, uh, we were... Um, we carried on training at home by ourselves, so we were given like a strict fitness plan to stick to mm. because we obviously thought we were going to end up getting a chance to carry on the season because obviously it wasn't um, it wasn't cancelled straight away. So we mm. thought, look, give it a month or two, let this settle down. We might be able to carry on the season, play the remaining nine games. Or we'd be in the playoffs because we were in there and we'd have to play the playoffs and then hopefully get promoted that way. So... For about a month, I think it was, we were doing like fitness sessions by ourselves every day. And then it got told like the season has been stopped until further notice. So we all had a little break. And then it was like, all right, the season's going to start again. We're in the playoffs. So we started training again by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we got voted out. So like you're there, you're obviously running by yourself every day. If you've got weights, you're doing weights by yourself every day. The thing that gets you up and gets you going is because you have a chance of becoming a championship player. Do you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. Because the days there is there are days where you wake up and you're like, oh, I, don't, I might be a bit achy or I didn't sleep going. You're like, I don't really want to do anything today. But then something clicks in your head, you're like, I could potentially have three games to become a championship player in a month's time. So get up and do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So you work hard for all that time in times that are quite scary for people. Especially like my missing little girl, they didn't really leave the house unless it was for a walk where no one was. 
I'm trying to like think I'm gonna potentially have three games against the championship. Like I need to look after myself. But then for that opportunity to be taken away, which I think is unfairly. Yeah, I agree. It was I tough. Completely... It, was, it was tough. I'm not gonna lie, it was tough because you just felt like obviously I'm confident I will be in a position where I'll have that opportunity again. But for some people, they may never get that opportunity again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Especially, like I said to you before, um, before we started talking, like we were, we were on form. I think we were top of the form table. Yeah, definitely were. Yeah, we um, had lost. I think it was two league games all season at home. <coughs> Sorry, um, and uh, we had, I think it was five out of nine games at home, four away. Mm. Two of our away games were against top eight. I think. But I think by the time we were going to play Coventry, they could have already won the league. Yeah. So, so if, gonna, if that felt anyone, yeah. like, similar to, like I said to you before, my last season at Newport, it felt like everything could come together. Mm-hmm. And we had nine games to obviously get promoted and I thought we were going to do it. So it was tough to take, if I'm honest. Yeah, I mean... I mean uh... Yeah, I, I keep a close eye on all the leagues, of course. You know, I'm just well into my football in general. Yeah. Obviously, Newport County first and foremost, but I like looking at a lot of other clubs as well. And Peterborough have always been a club I've had a soft spot for, which is why I was quite excited to see you play there, of course. And um, you know, I always root for Peterborough. You know, I've got a soft spot for Dara as well. You know, I think he, I think he's a cracking chairman. Fair play to him. And um, yeah, um, no, I I just felt that you were really on a roll at that point. And, and I thought, well, there's a team I think you can bank on to get promoted this season. And, you know, after it finished and, and seeing what the possibilities were going to be, because even at the bottom end, like Wimbledon and Tramier going down, you know, uh, the way they did, and they both felt they were hitting form and, and they could have yeah. saved themselves. Well, Tramier, obviously, think how hard they worked to get in that position because we lost to them in the playoff final. Mm-hmm. And then I think they won for the first time all season three games on the bounce just before we all got put into lockdown. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly be relegated when they could potentially have turned around or it looked like they were going to is is even harsher than what's happened to us oh yeah but then e- either way it's you know it's, it's a full season of uh, hard work and dedication pardon me um for it to be stripped away uh, because people were given the opportunity to vote in favor of what would what would favor them yeah and also i feel like how can you worry about a season that hasn't even started yet over a season that you haven't even finished. That is my exact words that I use, you know, because I've made many videos talking about how I think uh, this yeah. is all play eight. And I've just said, just pick a date when you think you can restart safely, right? And then just sort of work things out in between then and then restart this season when it's safe to do so. I don't think it really matters about next season. No, because it hasn't even started yet. Oh, that's, that's the point I've always made, yeah. Um, there'd be a lot of clubs who'd be like, well, we can't afford to play games behind closed doors. Well, you're going to have to next season. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? The way the EFL are and, and, and any sort of potential financial support they could offer these clubs who are struggling. Well, why couldn't the EFL subsidise or why couldn't they be in some kind of TV deal to put their games on TV or something like that, you know, get some kind of TV money in as a substitute. Oh, no. There was always a way that it could work out, but then... I think obviously certain people obviously had a way of that they wanted it to play out and they obviously managed to get the support. Especially yeah. when, you know, if you if you look at it, um the clubs who voted in favour of ending the season on the points uh, on the points per game average were obviously the current top six teams. And obviously the top six who ended up, you know, the four went in the playoffs yeah. and the two went up. And then any team that felt they may have been in danger of relegation and they looked like they were looking at the I looked at the table again earlier. And it looked like there was quite a few clubs who could have been in that danger zone. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. Reason was allowed to carry on, so that's where the support was for for ending it on the points per game. But I think um, I think I read four teams out of the whole league voted to carry on the season. The rest didn't. That's shocking, that. Yeah, four. So it's sad, oh, isn't it? But obviously, well, like I said to you before, we need to use that as a club and as a team mm. as motivation. Yeah, definitely. That a lot of the teams in our league have screwed us over. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I said to quite a few people in my team, like, 
But take it as you can take it as a comment because I wouldn't have wanted to play us in the playoffs. No, no, of course not. We, we had we had a formation that was working for us. No one could really handle it. Mm-hmm. The best player in the league on fire up front in Ivan Tony, mm-hmm. and we had a lot of good players around him that were just working hard for each other. Yeah. Sim- very similar to what we were doing at Newport County, obviously just with a bit more quality in certain areas. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, of course. And we were on fire. No one wanted to play us. No one did. And we, because we played all the top teams around that time, like I said to you earlier. Oh, you were battering them as well, weren't you? Wasn't we you? Oxford, like squeezing. We were playing final, we beating 4 0 at home. We were yeah. down to 10 men for like 40 minutes, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Wickham, they obviously got promoted. 4-0 at home. Rotherham at home, 2-1, one, one, their second. Mm-hmm. Even Portsmouth, I think they finished fourth. Mm-hmm. Um, 2-0 at home. Do you know what I mean? We I had a dip switch as, away as well, didn't you? We 4-1 away. So, like, we were in such a good place as a group. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know fans and players are biased, but you, I, you'd ask anyone who played us around about that time, we were the best team in the league. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that obviously this happened. But the most important thing at the time was people's health. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, well, and I've said, I said that from the start. That's the most important thing, people's health. Don't do anything that's going to risk anyone's health. No. But the minute you can play football, you need to resume the season that had not been finished. I think there's a lot of people out there that underestimate how much football means to people. Mm. You know, and, um, and, if, and if you do, you know, obviously doing this in the wrong way is going to really affect a, a, lot, a, a big part of people's lives, you know? You know, obviously health is the priority, of course. But yeah, then for- I said that all along. Like, I'm not, I wasn't asking for us to go back to football immediately mm. and put, because I wouldn't want to put my health at risk or my wife or my little girls. I'd oh, never absolutely. do that. But if it's all right to play football now behind closed doors like we're seeing it is, mm-hmm. then we should all do it and we should all finish the season. Yeah, 100%. So, but that's, that's all in the past now. Do you know what I mean? We just need to make sure we use it as motivation and get promoted next year. Well, I'll be rooting for you, mate, on that one. Um, I've got one final question. It's, it's the same question I ask everybody. So, um, who is the best player you've played with and the best player you've played against so far in your career? Best player I've played with? Mm-hmm. The best player I've played with is now, because... I've played with some players that were good players at the time, but now are playing in the Premier League. So, have you heard of Adam Webster? Yeah, yeah. For Brian, I played with him at Portsmouth. We come through at the same uh, time together. Mm. He's obviously gone on to do unbelievable things, similar to Ben White. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Ben White, the player I played with in Newport County, is not the player that's playing unbelievable for Leeds now. Do you know what I mean? He's at he's at gradually get there. Yeah. Same with Adam Webster. When I was playing with him. At Portsmouth, he was good, but he wasn't Premier League quality then. Mm. So it's tough because I played with Ivan Tony this year, and as far as strikers go, he's the best. He's the best I played with. I think just he's got he's got absolutely everything. Yeah, you do hear his name a lot when you're hearing someone's name a lot. Yeah, like, you know, um, you get some goal, you get some strikers who are just pure goal scorers. They don't do much else, but if they get a chance, they finish it. Or you yeah. get some that they might not take every single chance they get, but they will hold the ball up for you and they will bring others into play. And then you've got others that will run channels and turn a bad pass into a good pass. He can literally do everything. Yeah. And defensively, from set pieces, he's massive because he's so good in the air. Mm-hmm. And obviously, he's, I don't know how many goals he did score, but he was top goal scorer in the league by a mile. Like, as far as like players of literally the best I've played with, like, if I played with Adam Webster and Ben White now, they'd definitely be up there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because of, yeah, recently, I'd I'd say, um, I'd say Ivan Tony, like, it's it's not a secret that he's probably going to get brought. Oh, yeah. From what, because obviously, he's way too good for League One. I'd, mm. I, I think he could play in the Premier League. Week and week yeah. out at the moment, I don't know. You don't know until someone actually has to do it. Do you know what I mean? But he's physically, he would not struggle. If he gets a chance, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll take them. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just needs that opportunity, but I feel like it will be in the Prem sooner rather than later. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, Peter Bestrike has got a, got a reputation for, for moving on and, and playing. Yeah, Premier. obviously, I don't know too much about um, previous ones. Obviously, I, I, I never watched him, but I hear good things like um, Aaron McLean, who's a coach at the club this season with us, um, Craig McHale Smith, Dwight Gale, who else is there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's loads of them. I know Asim Belonga hasn't gone into yeah. the Premier League yet, but he, I, I think he could get there one time. He's a very, very good career. Mm. Like he's gone on from here at a high level. Do you know what I mean? There's so many, and I hear people all the time say that Ivan's the best. Yeah. We can so see them. He's definitely... And then best I've played against... What? So, like, biggest name or person who's given me the, my toughest game? I'd say who's giving you the toughest game. You're, um, you might have been at this game, actually. Do you remember um, he plays for Peterborough now with me, but he went on loan to Plymouth this season. Have you heard of George Cooper? Yes. Do you remember, I think it was second game of the season, away at Crewe in Flinney's first full season? Yeah, I remember him, yeah. So we'd done the, um, a build-up all week and they were like, but... George Cooper, decent, left-footed, will come in at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. Make sure you show him down the line. Like, that's all he said. That's all you have to do. Just make sure you show him down the line. I was like, sweet. I'll show him the line. Um, if he knocks down the line, I'll run down the line and block across. I was quite, I'm quite good at it. Do you know what I mean? I don't often get beat down the line. So I'm like, just overshow him. So he, he got the ball for the first time in that game. I don't know if you remember. I think we drew to all. To all it was, yeah. I was there. And um, all that's going in my head is showing the line, yeah? So I show him the line a lot. And he literally knocks it down. The, he didn't even attempt to go inside. He knocks it down the line, crosses it, and they hit a post. So everyone's like, Bucks, come on. I was like, all right, yeah, fair enough. I was like, I showed him too much respect. I showed him too much down the line. So the next time, I didn't show him as much down the line. He cuts inside, has a shot, hits the post again. Yeah. So it's like two times he's got it now. He's making me like a mug. Do you know what I mean? Um, and eventually, um, I got to grips with him in the end, but it was like, I, I, did, I couldn't figure him out because he was so good at going both ways. Mm. If I gave him a yard or two each way, he'd go the opposite way. So if I showed him inside a yard, he would go inside. If I give him an extra yard down the line to make sure he didn't go inside, he would use the line because he was quick and could use both feet. And that was like the first time in my career I can like remember coming up against somebody who could go both ways. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Know. Usually, even in League One, to be fair, if someone's right footed, they'll constantly go on their right foot. No one's going to use their weak foot. Do you know what I mean? So even this season, I've had people who are very quick, very direct, but all they do is go down the line. So I find it quite easy to deal with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stand down the line, you get your arm across it. And if they try and cross it, you try and block it. But he was so good at going both ways. It took me so mm -hmm. long to be able to get myself into a position where I could affect him without him either going inside or down the line. Yeah. Do you remember that game? I do remember that game, and I remember him, and I remember him causing us a lot of problems. I do remember yeah, that, that, yeah. Yeah, that's the first time I can um, visibly remember, like, thinking to myself, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Because I showed him down the line and then nearly scored, and then I blocked the line off a little bit more, and because there was enough room for him to come inside, he went inside and had a shot and at the post, and I was thinking... I'm in a lose lose. And then it got to a stage where I think I had to foul him a couple of times or I had to get really, really tight, maybe leave a gap in behind me. But if he did get the ball to feet, which was happening a lot, he literally had to pass it straight away, otherwise I was gonna tackle him. Yeah, but I've dealt with that loads of times since, but obviously that was the first time I can remember clearly. Yeah. And uh, you tend to find it it's 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 in that position where obviously you find it so hard to deal with him. That's obviously trying to readjust yourself to get your positioning right to, to counteract what he was going to do. That's where that learning curve really. Oh, yeah, like now. So, I know. Once you deal with something like that once, obviously, it would, thankfully, it hasn't happened since because I've dealt with it before. Do you know what I mean? If I ever get into that position again, I know what to do now. Mm -hmm. Because it was the first time that that's ever happened to me. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I've played against loads in training now. He ended up going out on loan, but he's, yeah, he's a good player. But it's like, there's loads of players like that out there. 
Yeah. Play on the right, but left footed, or play on the left and the right footed. Yeah. I'm actually a fan of that position, the inside forward. I actually quite like that. Yeah. It's very yeah. hard to mark. But yeah, especially especially when when they can actually use their other foot as well, then you know, that makes them a weapon yeah. then, doesn't it? Because obviously I didn't I'll be honest, I didn't even think about how good his right foot was because all week I was just thinking, don't show him on his left. Yeah. It didn't even come into my mind that he might be really good on his right foot, which he was decent. Do you know what I mean? He, it's it's not a rubbish right foot. He put in some decent balls for it. So obviously that was that was my toughest experience in like dealing with one player. I've had, I've played worse in games, mm. but as far as like dealing with a winger, that was probably my toughest experience. He'll be way. if he sees this, he'll be buzzing as well because the first thing happened, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, you, you beat me above uh, Riyad Mahrez and Bernardo Silva, <laughs> like, you know, that's crazy. Yeah, but obviously, like that, mm. with regards to um, Mahrez, like he does that a lot, but. but because I'm don't get me wrong, Mario's gave me a tough time. Yeah. But obviously he's at another level. Do you know what I mean? It'd be silly. It'd be weird if he wasn't giving me a tough time. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that experience I had against Crew and against George Cooper mm-hmm. would have made me in a better position when I went up against Mario's, Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get you on that one, mate. So uh... all, you're learning all the time, aren't you? Oh, of course, right. And, and obviously, you've still got plenty of years ahead of you to learn more, of course, mate. You know, so like I said, obviously, you know, you know, there's plenty of people at Newport who still hold you, hold you in such high regard, you know, we'll be following you for the rest of your career now. Yeah. You know? So, um, as far as questions are concerned, mate, that's all I've got for you for today. So, uh, no, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I say right, this is one of the longest ones that I've done. So, uh, thanks for spending so much time talking to me. I really appreciate it, Dan. Oh, no, no, mate. I really enjoyed that. It was fun. Fantastic. Thanks, yeah, no worries. And I'll, I'll get a link over to you once the video's done. All right, top man. You look after yourself, won't you, yeah? Oh, absolutely. You too, mate. Have finished now, then? Sorry? we finished now, yeah? As soon as I stop the recording, mate, yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. I killed you. <laughs> That's okay. Many thanks for watching the latest content on the Amber Army channel. Please make sure you leave us a like. Make sure you subscribe for more content, both for the neutral football fan and also plenty of Newport County. Even more Newport County uh, content can be found on the club's iFollow channel on the link above. It is just £4.49 per month to subscribe to that service. And those of you feeling extra generous can also support us on Patreon on the link at the bottom there. Um, That would be a monthly donation of your choice. Thank you again. Make sure you've subscribed. And as always, up the county.